Today we're doing the chores much as usual, but there's one big difference. Today we're going to try to find our egg eating hen and put an end to her. Alice, come on. Here, move over. Move over. Today there's no evidence of the egg eater, but many times in the past three weeks we've found a whole clutch of eggs that was either cracked, broken, chipped, or just messy with egg yolk. And that tells us there's one chicken, at least one chicken in here, who's turned semi-cannibalistic and is eating chicken eggs. <laughs> Beautiful eggs, no cracks, no peck marks, but many days we come down and there'll be peck marks in every single one, or just egg yolk, huge messes. This is the one that I pushed out to gather eggs, and it looks like she's getting ready to settle down to lay one. Are you the egg eater? Are you the egg eater? Ladies, can I get your attention? I'm looking for an egg eating chicken. Okay, no one's gonna snitch on their friends, I guess. The pigs will mostly eat food scraps today. And these food scraps include some, a chicken carcass, which has been cooked for about two days to make stock. And I'll just show you the bones here. Here's probably one of the biggest bones in the chicken. They're gonna be able to chew them easily and they'll eat all of that. Ooh, do you hear that fence popping? My solar chargers are back in the game. There's always a few weeks in the winter where it's cloudy and rainy and it's cold and cold and no sun is trouble with solar chargers, but they're hot, they're all back at 100%. We got through that bad period without any pig escapes, thank God. These chickens are hungry, but I can't feed them yet. We've gotta do our egg eater test first. Okay, I need to run in here. Let the cow back out with the others. She's done with her grain. She's got hay in here, but if you leave her in here for long, she gets uh, worried and anxious as do the other cows. Cows are very social. I also need to get a couple buckets out of here. I need to sneak past the bowl and get a bucket out of that stall that I fed him some grain the other day in. Hey bud, I'm just gonna walk past you. Hey bud, I'm gonna walk past you. I just like to talk to cows when I'm coming past them. They seem to appreciate it. What it means is you're never gonna sneak up on them. And he wants this bucket, I'm gonna show him there's nothing in it. In his mind, a bucket means there's food, so if you show him, if you just run past him with a bucket, he'll, he'll sometimes come after you for the food. If you show him there's nothing in it, you might have to do it twice. He'll say, okay, okay, I got it. Here's one more bucket that I fed the goats a little grain in the other day. Hey buddy, I'm gonna walk past you. There's nothing in this bucket here, nothing at all. It's funny that I'm saying this, but you have to communicate with the animals because if you don't, it causes trouble. And sneaking up on a bull, or any cow for that matter, and startling them is a recipe for trouble. Bucket number three. <laughs> um, and you could get kicked. So if I'm ever walking up behind an animal, I'm just talking calmly to them. And then that bucket trick will save you a lot of trouble. Because as long as you hold a bucket, you know, I've done everything I can do to train those animals. Hey, a bucket has grain in it. Follow me. So if you don't communicate with them, this bucket has no grain in it today or at this moment, they will chase you, they will come after you. So there's a little tip. Communicate with your cows, talk to them, and let them know what's going on. They're not stupid. They, they forget quickly if there's grain in that bucket, but they're not stupid. You can show them no grain, 
and they'll move on to something else. Okay, it's time. I'm gonna show you my secret weapon here. It's not really much of a secret weapon. It's just a wooden egg. And it looks remarkably like a real egg to the point that my kids actually collect these and they end up at the house pretty often. You can feel it, it's a little lighter than a real egg and it has a different sound, but it's very, very similar to a real egg. Similar enough to trick a chicken. So what I'm gonna do is take this egg and present it to some hungry chickens. They haven't been fed yet today. They don't have any feed out there from yesterday. And I'm gonna drop this on the ground in the sight of all the chickens. And we're gonna see if we can catch one chicken showing behavior that goes beyond just curiosity is actually an attempt to eat the egg. It's hard, pretty impossible actually, to catch them in the act because like I said, this only happens every few days that one of them will get in there and break eggs and eat eggs. So even if we put a camera down here, we'd have to put it out for multiple days and it would have to film continuously on all the nest boxes. It's a real challenge to think you could just observe the behavior, but I know the chickens are hungry. One of them thinks this is food and hopefully we're about to find out which one. The goose may be a little bit of a wild card just because he disrupts the chicken's behavior sometimes. He might bite them. He might bite me, actually. This is a goose we're gonna cull, and it is spring when geese are most aggressive. They, roosters as well. They, they all get their panties in a wad, and he's been attacking consistently, but he has always been the most aggressive. All right, I wanna come in. I'm coming in. See, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not gonna work. Come here, come here, baby. You can't be out here, you gotta be in there for the test. Come here, you gotta be in here for the test. Come on. Come here. Fortunately, the three chickens that are escaped are really easy going, easy to catch. There's a couple in here that are impossible to catch. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. Yeah. You showed me. You showed me. All right. I think he's got all his angst out for the moment. Oh, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. The chickens are out and the geese are like, no, why are you taking it out? Um, okay, I'm gonna try to feed them down here. But once they're out, they love being out. You can't really get them back with feed. Hey, chicky, 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 chicky. Hey, chicky, 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 chicky. See, this guy wants some, but these ladies, they don't care. Here's the ones I got back. One out. One in. All right, thank you for going back in. Okay, most of them are back. There's four chickens, three chickens under my truck right there that have not come back. And one of those could be the egg eater. Let's try though, let's try it. All right, ready? Here it goes. Hey, hey, hey. They're so, they're so distracted by their food, I'm afraid they're not gonna pay attention to this because, all right, we'll just try it, why not? Curiosity, curiosity. All right, that rooster, just, that's just a one curiosity peck. What is it? He's gonna leave it alone. He's not trying to eat it. All right, that leghorn has come back a second time. Just curiosity though. All right, curiosity. They're all interested. One peck from that rooster. All right, I'm gonna let them all out. All right, that went well. Actually, it didn't. I thought I had the gate closed behind me. 
but it popped open and they are just if we can catch them at the right time this evening we can catch them before they've gone to bed but when they've gathered down there and uh, we'll try again when they're all present and accounted for that many eggs and I made three big quiche yesterday Bree and the kids have gone out. She's pregnant, as most of you know, and has been extremely sick. We think it's because she had twin embryos in there to start with. If you wanna learn more about that, I'll link a video up here. So for one of the first times in the past few weeks, she's actually taken all the kids and gone out. She just texted me, told me she was on her way home and exhausted, so I'm trying to kind of get things pulled together. I cleaned the house up and cooking a really easy supper. We're gonna make chicken tikka masala and we're gonna make it basically out of a jar. We're basically gonna add that into there and we'll make some rice to go with it in a little while. We'll simmer that for about 15 minutes and then turn it down to, to just keep it warm. Did everyone enjoy the visit with Nana? Yeah. 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 It was so nice. The kids haven't seen my mom since probably Christmas. Right? Yeah. Wilder even said, where are the presents? <laughs> he says, where's Santa Claus? <laughs> so it was just way overdue to spend time with her. It was, it was really sweet. And it was such a nice day. They played outside. And then she has like a playground in her neighborhood. And Nana always makes them something called kid coffee. She has like an espresso machine. And so she foams them milk and puts cinnamon and sugar on top. Did Nana make you your favorite? Yeah. I didn't make the rice because Brie is the rice meister, master. How are you gonna make rice without measuring the water? I'll show you in just a minute. Let's get the water to a boil and then I'll show you what you do. Water's boiling. Okay, so basically you just fill the water up to where you know that your rice is still gonna be covered, but you're not gonna overflow your pot. Because I've done this, I know about how much it's gonna take. No, wait, you don't need to cook it. They can just eat it raw. Like hey, that. hey, hey, take that out of the rice, please. Thank uh, you. Uncooked. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's good for their bellies. So you can rinse this rice if you want to. Also, this works best with more long grain rice, basmati, jasmine. This is going to make a drier rice, not a sticky rice, which I prefer. I like rice that kind of falls apart not sticks together so you've got your water boiling you just pour your rice in I'm gonna do two scoops which will be enough for us for dinner tonight so this would be more like Indian rice rather than like Chinese this is more Chinese. of an Indian or Thai rice you bring your rice back up to a boil you leave it uncovered and once it's back up to a boil you time it for 12 minutes and then you drain it and after you drain it you need to have time for it to sit for a little while to really drain out all that water. And that will also help it not be sticky. Yeah, I used to fail at making rice all the time. I'd burn the bottom of the pot mostly. But now with this method, I never fail. I mean, it, sometimes maybe it's a little stickier than I wanted it, but mostly it turns out perfect. And it's fast. And it's fast and easy. Mix yeah. it. I was trying to catch an egg eater this morning. But all the chickens, I accidentally let them out. Yeah, you gotta do it in the morning. It won't work this afternoon. You don't think it'll work? Even if they're all in there? Well, if they're all in there. But the easiest way to catch an egg eater is to roll an egg out. And the ones that go try to eat it are the egg eaters. Kind of sad, I hope it's not one of my favorites. But it really works better with a real egg. Oh, really? Yeah. They're not stupid. We may be too early. There's a chicken still out. What did you say? You're an egg eater, Dad. You know, you're right. I really should have more compassion for this chicken, right? It's just doing what I like to do, eating eggs. Watch out for that goose. He's right up there. He's right there. That's the one that'll get you. I don't like him. You don't like him? Why not? Because he's such a bat. He's, like him. He's, like he's, he's, he is such a bat. Oh my goodness. Look at these happy chickens in this mulch pile. Look how much the garlic has grown. It's that time of year when the garden starts just growing again and it's really exciting. It's grown inches in just a couple weeks. 
lots of it. Yeah. Now all this stuff we've kept dormant through the winter, this beautiful spinach is getting this beautiful sunlight for the deer leg. Mm. Isn't that good spinach? It's so tasty out of the garden. It's like a different flavor. Yes, good spicy outfit. It's not that spicy. It mm. hurts really Yummy, isn't it? bad. Look at this garlic, it looks so nice. Don't touch it. All this dormant stuff is coming back now that the days are longer. That's the main factor that determines these plants' growth rates. It's not the temperature, it's more the length of light. So now the days are getting longer and longer and the plants are growing faster and faster. So this cilantro will come back beautifully here over the next few weeks and it already is starting to. There's new shoots here, new, new growth. These collards have never been this sweet. The collards are yeah. good? Yummy. Mm. And we're getting cilantro because it goes really, really well with the meal we're eating. We're still just getting little sprigs, but that's really all we need. That is not as much as I was hoping for, but that's okay. It'll still give us that amazing flavor. There's a goose mating a goose in the middle of this street. Not very good manners. I'm just holding him because he's biting me. Once you get a goose by the neck, there's not a lot they can do. They can beat you with their wings and they can scratch you with their claws, but they they think the world is over once you get them like this. Why are you so mean, buddy? Why are you biting everyone and beating up on everyone? I won't let him go. You can pet him. Do you know why he's being so mean? Why? That's why he said that he wants to go out there. I think, I'm going to let him go. Do you think he's going to keep attacking or run away? He's done for now. Let's see how many goose eggs there are. See if there's one more than this morning. We don't eat goose eggs. Why not? Three, this, whoa, that's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope, same as this morning. I'm covering them up so the chickens leave them alone. I've got the trick eggs. Two of them now. But I'm not gonna throw them in here now and do my test because look, I got it all wrong again. They're eating. I had to feed them to get them in. So I'm gonna do this in the morning and we'll see if we can catch the egg eater. All right, I'm coming through. Watch out, guys. Watch out, animals. Move. All right, I wanna come in here. <laughs> Please let me in, don't squash me. I'm gonna slip by. There's about 3,000 pounds of animal in this tiny room with me. That rice turned out perfect, yet again. I'm working on mine still. Yeah. There you go, that's how we ask for things. What if you don't like the food? You still say thank you. <laughs> you said thank you, but you said I'm not really hungry. I'm going to Oh girl. You look beautiful. I look beautiful? Thank you. <laughs> Gracie, you are such a blessing. Thank you so much. My sweet 11 year old has Can made I us. Get water from me? Yeah, I'll get you some water. Has made us breakfast this morning blueberry muffins, bacon, store bought bacon. She points out it's true, we're out of bacon. We still have two hogs, we need to butcher it, but I did break down and buy bacon because I wanted to. And that's my business, as Tabitha Brown says. So I learned. When Grace was little, from her grandmother, to let her be in the kitchen. I did not do that um, initially because it was so stressful, but I would go over to Arthur's parents' house and see, just a second, and see Edie allow Grace to help her make food. And it really encouraged me over the years to do that. And now all my kids help. The older four can cook. I mean, the older two can really cook. The younger, the older boys are getting there. They can make simple things. And it's really a huge blessing, even though it was tedious and kind of stressful when they were little. But now I can come downstairs from getting ready and be served a glorious breakfast. And she gets to 
enjoy the accomplishment of feeling like she did something for the family, she's a part of the family, that she can do, that she can do things and that she's valuable. And um, yeah, so both my girls are huge blessings in this way and many other ways too in this family. And the boys are as well. You've got your overalls on, that can only mean one thing. My pants don't fit. <laughs> No, I, th I, meant, I thought it meant you were going down the hill. I can't because the girls have school. Okay. All right, if you haven't realized by now, we're in the next day and we're gonna try to catch this egg eater. First step though, is we've gotta check the eggs because I have a different plan this time. I'm gonna check the eggs. No, not with the hammer. <laughs> Don't use the hammer. All right. Let's see if there's no goose eggs. Let's see if there's any more goose eggs. Good idea. All right, I'll guard from the geese from behind and you look. It looks like there's one more. Do you see that white one? Uh -huh. Well, uncover them. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means there's one more than yesterday. And look, the clean one was probably laid yesterday afternoon or this morning. They get so dirty with the geese on them, but look how clean this new one is. Cool, huh? Oh, is that your chicken? What's that called? It's called a white leghorn, right? Found some eggs? Alright, come on, lady. Let me get those eggs. We got them. We'll let her lay her egg now. Alright, show us how big. A chicken egg is next to a goose egg. Whoa. <laughs> Amazing. Put the right. baby one back. What'd you say? Put the baby one back. Put the goose egg back? Yeah. Good idea. And don't touch it. Don't touch it? Okay. All right, it's time to do our egg eater test with a twist. We're going to use real eggs at Bree's recommendation. She's done this before successfully. These eggs are at risk this morning. We made it in without releasing the chickens, so over yesterday, success so far. The goose is not coming after me yet. Let's just watch him. These chickens. So what we're seeing is a lot of curiosity. Everyone's coming in to take one little peck and see what's going on. But is anyone going to go in for the kill? There's a little dot on that egg they're picking. I kind of suspect an older chicken, like this one here. And I know that's wrong. I shouldn't stereotype an older hen. No, they're just checking. They're just curious. So far. This one's actually pecking. This. All right, we have a candidate right here. No, she's wandering off. What about a rooster? What about a rooster? All right, this black one came back. For the record, though, that egg she's picking has a weird little dot on it. I don't know. Go tell all the hens who are laying eggs to come out here, buddy. Watch out for the geese. They're giving these eggs a lot of attention, but no one's gone for the kill yet. No one's like actually pecked them hard. You hear that sound? They see that hawk over there. That little high-pitched whining sound. That black chicken's back. Yeah. Oh, you got it? You got the egg she laid? How cool. It's really cool. Yeah. She, and here she comes. Look, she's done laying and now she's coming out. <laughs> Sliding down. <laughs> so far, this black chicken has showed the most interest. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe she's broody though. Look at her. Look, I think she's, she's thinking maybe I'll sit on these eggs. Look at her. The black one's back. You're right. I 
I don't know guys, I feel like that's long enough to give him a chance. I've been out here for five minutes watching chickens just check out the eggs. They're trying to, they'll eat specks off of them. And my eggs that started really clean, now they're not that dirty, but they started almost perfectly clean. Now they're kind of dirty. They've rolled them around. And they're checking them out, but it's like, it's like they'll check out like this stuff that they, this mud that they put on it is actually not mud. So I don't know. We didn't find the egg eater. Well, Oh, put it in. All right, because you didn't cooperate, you get rocks for breakfast. It's actually not rocks. I just threw some creek gravel and rocks in with their food so they could have grit because with this deep mulch bedding out here, all the <laughs> non-organic, you know, there's not much non-organic on the surface. Even though we didn't find the egg eater, I'm going to go back to what maybe a semi-effective prevention technique which is leaving wooden eggs in the nest boxes and just maybe that egg eater will meet one of these and say oh can't eat that egg all right guys we failed to find the egg eater we'll have to try again maybe i'll have brie lend her ideas until then you stay well and we'll see you in a video really soon goodbye